I was 15 years old when my high school marching band won a trip to Disney World. The official story was that at one of the marching competitions we'd been to that year, some Disney executive had seen us and liked our uniforms and our routine. We would be marching in the Magic Kingdom Parade behind the mouse himself, which did in fact happen in the end. I just can't help but wonder how true the story was, because in my estimation now, as an adult, we were not all that good. And I think there were many others better positioned to be in that celebratory parade. On the other hand, for all I know, there are Disney executives going around all over the country and offering this desperately to any band director they can find because there is some secret catch that makes this a really bad deal. Either way, we piled onto two chartered buses and made our way to Florida so we could perform our divine patriotic duty in the swelling Orlando heat. Along the way, we stopped a few times because it was not an insubstantial distance. The last time that we stopped was at a shopping mall in Panama City. There, in the ultimate wisdom of adults throughout history that have had it up to fucking here with teenagers, the various teachers and parents acting as camp followers for our veritable Mongol horde, released us for two hours to use the mall's smallish food court and visit a few stores before returning to the buses for the last stretch of our trip. I did what I always did in these situations, and found two girls to follow around because I did not ever in my life get along well with other boys. These two girls and I end up in a store called Hot Topic, which at the time was one of the only two retail chains in America where one could readily purchase clothes that had nudity or profanity printed on them. Being teenagers, we thought this was absolutely stellar. We hadn't been in the store too terribly long when the girls laid eyes on an object of their desire. The item that they both longed for was a pair of black boy shorts made of a sturdy synthetic lining and wrapped in the most elegant lace scroll work, a quality far above that expected in the lowly hot topic. The underthings looked like something out of a perfume ad, the sort of thing that pretty girls just have, with no real memory of how they got them or where they came from, you just had these if you were a sexy woman. They both turned their eyes to me, hopeful, because I had a magical artifact on my person, an ancient and rare relic that doesn't come often to teenagers. I had... $200. I meant to purchase them their lingerie out of kindness, just because they were being nice to me and I did like both of them in more than just the typical covetous and sweaty way teenage boys usually like girls. And as I was on the cusp of breaking my hesitation, they did something that would have sealed the deal, or should have sealed the deal, but instead reversed the situation entirely. These two girls, with their freshly developed bodies, resplendent in newfound womanly charms, tilted their hips and suggested coquettishly that if I were to buy them each a pair of these underwear, that they then would be obliged to model them for my pleasure. At that suggestion, I suddenly became overwhelmed with anger and told them, repeatedly and incredulously, no you won't, no you won't. They would repeat their entreatments and assure me that I was as good as guaranteed a real and very good show. I told them to stop lying, to stop trying to trick me, but they refused to change the story and continued to promise and swear in hopes that I think I would fund their ascension to being the kind of pretty girls that had clothes like this, even though I think they probably already were. Eventually, I left the store in a huff and found a secluded place in the mall to spend the rest of my two hours alone. I regret that decision, 
Not because I believe I missed out on seeing some flesh, but because of how poorly I handled it. I wish I could go back again and explain myself. I wish I could tell them that I felt wretched and ugly, so much so that the idea that any person would be interested in sharing intimacy of any kind with me for a mere pair of lacy panties, though I do remember they were quite expensive, was so out of the question that it had to be an impossible joke at my expense. In fact, so far, there had only been two exceptions to that in my experience. Time after time, people played this trick on me where they tried to bait me. They would make some kind, earnest-sounding request to start, like, will you come and sit next to me? We could hold hands. They would ask this, only to intentionally then surround themselves on all sides with other people so that it couldn't happen. Then their friends would all taunt me and laugh, remarking on how stupid I was for thinking this person ever had any interest in me. These sort of tricks were common. But once, a boy was concerned that I'd been checking out his girlfriend from afar, and admittedly I had been, and he elected a proxy to come and summon me, saying that this girl was excited to expose her breasts to me. I rolled my eyes and went along with the intention of stopping short before getting close to her to ask what she really wanted. Only, the words were not even out of my mouth before the boyfriend appeared to ambush me from behind, and after striking me hard on the back of the head, informed me that I had been duped. I don't know why they did stuff like this, and though I surmise it's probably because I had a very expressive face and it was incredibly fun to watch me bulge and squirm. And I also know that I was an annoying, unstable little fucker at times, so it was probably satisfying to make bad things happen to me. Whatever the reasons, this sort of behavior set up a trend. The culminating event was probably the summer, before this big trip, where I'd had sex with a girl for the first time. It didn't last long, and neither of us reached any kind of climax, though I think I would have if I didn't feel like something was wrong and stopped in the middle. But it was already too late. About ten minutes after we'd put our clothes back on, she began to cry because she was ashamed of herself for having sex with me. I don't know how to interpret that shame coming from a girl who before claimed to have been having sex already, and joyfully so but it felt to me like she was ashamed of herself for having sex with somebody so low and hideous. And despite what I felt to be a genuine chemistry before, it felt like she considered herself to be marked black if anybody found out that this had happened. My feelings were somewhat confirmed when she swore both me and the other couple who was with us that day to secrecy about the whole affair. Later. She claimed to me that I begged her to fuck me, that I told her nobody ever would if she didn't. Truth be told, I may have felt something like that, but I don't remember it, and I don't remember saying it. I know I wouldn't have said it like that anyway, because, well, I'd already been sleeping with a male friend of mine that summer, so it just wouldn't have been true. The overall impact of the experience was an impression that people just generally didn't like me. Ever. That any person pretending to like me had ulterior motives and wasn't to be trusted, or would change their mind shortly after doing anything meaningful with me. This was the taste in my mouth on that day at the mall in Panama City when those two girls saw this thing they wanted. I wish I could go back and share that with them possibly while ringing up the things they wanted. I remember I only bought one thing of any substance on the whole trip to Florida and came back home with a little over $150, so it would have been no trouble. These two girls had been kind to me and had never been a party to any of that ugly behavior that was commonly practiced on me. I don't know or care if they actually would have modeled these lazy boy shorts for me. I only wish I could have communicated what I was going through so they would understand me 
instead of acting offended in what must have been the most confusing way to them. Anyway, that's the whole story. There's no happy ending, no punchline, no greater profound point. Sorry. <laughs>